Welcome and thank you for watching this video. In this video, we're going to learn how to create a 4 bit adder using Xilinx IAC. Now, before we start, we need to understand how a binary adder works and what's the internal structure. Now, here we're seeing the half adder, where we have two inputs and two outputs. The difference between a half adder and a full adder is that the full adder has three inputs. A, B, and the carry in, and two outputs, the sum and the carry out. So we can see here the internal structure of the full adder, and it's composed of two half adders. The first half adder adds up A and B, while the second one computes the result of the addition plus the carry in. And the output is again the sum and the carry out. And we can see the truth table there and the uh, minimized expression of the two. So we're going to create this full adder using Xilinx IC. So the first thing we created a Xilinx project and we add a new file. And in this case, we're going to create a schematic entry design. So we call this full adder. We choose the schematic entry and we specify the name full adder. We click on next and that will create an empty canvas where we can draw our circuit. So we can zoom in by pressing shift and the mouse. And now in the library tab, we just we can just type look for the different logic gates that we want. We need a two input XOR gate, so we type in XOR two, and we place two of them. Then we need two AND gates and one OR gate. So we can look it up again in the library. The easiest way is just to type in the gate name AND two, and we're going to place two of those on the drawing canvas. So now we're having the two ANDs for the um, carry chain, and we need an OR gate to for the uh, carry chain. Again, we place that. Now, once we once we have placed all the gates, we need to connect them together. So for that, we select the add line button in the uh, in the tool pane, and we start connecting the gates together. So Xilinx, the, the tool will actually uh, once you connect the lines, straight lines, it will route them together, and you will see how the lines will adjust automatically. You can move the gates and the connection will still remain. And so we do the same thing between the XOR gate, the output of the XOR gate, the output of the AND gate with the OR gate. Uh, we need to, might have to try a couple of times. And the second AND gate connected to the input of the OR gate. And we can move the gates and you can see that the connection will still remain. We do the same thing for the XOR gate, the output of the XOR gate to the input. And once we have connected all the different logic gates, we need to add the ports, the input and the output ports. So for that, we select the port tab and we just click and drag the inputs of the gates where you want, which you want to con convert into the ports. So then we have three inputs and two outputs. This is A, B, the two bits that we want to add and the carry in. In this case, we just added A and B, and we're going to re relabel that later on. So we have the three inputs, and Xilinx assigns them a default name. And we're going to now create the output ports. So we don't have to specify the direction. Xilinx automatically knows what the direction is, if it's an input or an output of a gate. So we do the same thing. The first, we added the sum, the output sum, and now we added the output of the carry out. So once we have the, the ports, the IOs, we have we finish the connection between the AND gate and the ports. This is A and B, the, the carry of A and B. If A and B are both one, then this AND gate will tell us if a carry exists or not. So we add up all the connections. We finish the connections once the ports have been uh, inserted. And now we can rename them. So we go double click on the port and select the name. In this case, we're going to call it A, B, and carry in for the inputs. Let's see, A, B, and this will be our carry in. And we can also click at the output ports, and we're going to call these sum S for the sum and carry out, C out. So once we've created the component, ideally you might want to simulate it, make sure it works correctly. But if you're confident that it works, what we want to do now is after re resizing the component, make it look a little nice so we can save that. We're going to create a component out of that because we want to create a 4-bit adder. So we go to Tools 
and symbol wizard and we select the logic schematic that we just created and we do the important thing is we should not change the name the name has to be exactly the same as the file name so we keep the default name we select next and then it will create a full editor and we'll add this to our library so this is our full editor so now we have to create another file in our, in, into our project and this new file will be the 4-bit adder and we're going to use four of these 1-bit full adders to create our 4-bit adder. So we go back to our project, we right click and we say add new file. We select again schematic entry and we call this file adder 4-bit for example. You can call it anything that you want. Click on next, finish and it will create another end, uh, empty canvas. Now we can zoom in again. Now we go into the symbol library and now we're looking for the full adder component that we have just created. We call full adder. We see that it has added that component to the library and we're going to place four of these because now we want to add four bits. So you see this is the component we just generated and the name is full adder. We place four of these on our canvas. We can resize that. And now we need to connect and create all the connections. So for that, obviously, we need to know we're going to create a 4-bit ripple carry adder. So we need to understand how the ripple carry adder works. And that means that the carry of the first stage is connected to the carry out, it connected to the carry in of the, of the next stage. So we connect the carries first. Right? And now we can need to connect the ports. So for this one, instead of the, we can connect the carry in and the carry out, so the carry of the first stage will be the total carry of the of the adder and the carry out is the carry of the output of the adder. Now we need to create the, the inputs and the outputs of the full adder. Now instead of connecting inputs and outputs to every single adder and which would clutter the design, we can just add a in IO, a wire, and then we connect a IO pad to that wire that we are doing now. And we're gonna create a bus. So we can change the name and to declare a bus, a 4-bit bus, we say A and in brackets 3 to 0. That means it's the wire represents 4 bits, right? 3 to 0. And the second one, we recall this A and in brackets 3 to 0. That means this wire represents as a bus, a 4-bit uh, bus uh, of a bit, uh, the width is four bits. So we have now A and B, and we do the same for the output. We draw a wire, and now we add an output port to the wire, and we call we call this S. This is the sum, and it's now four bits. It's not a single bit; it's four bit. So we go to name, and we change the name to S, and again it's a bus. So in brackets, three to zero. We said okay, and now we need to connect these to the inputs of each of the adders. So for that, we'll go to marker. And we're going to extend the inputs of the buffers and the outputs with add a little wire. I mean, this extra wire will allow us to connect the ports that we just created to this particular ports of adder. So we extend the inputs and the outputs of the full adders a little tiny little bit. So we need to add a wire there, right? So be careful they don't you don't connect them together. Right? Be careful. Make sure that the wires are not connecting that the output is not connected to the input of the previous buffer. So we extend the wire and now we're going to label this wire with the same name as the input or the output port based on the wire. So we go to markers and now we choose to consecutively name them. You see, as selected in the option in ascending order. So you see the key, the name, you call this A zero or B and B A zero B zero A zero and we click on the wire which you want where we want to assign this name. So consecutive I mean, increasing name and you click on the wire and automatically it increases that from A zero becomes A one. So you can undo it if you did a mistake. If you if every time you click it will increase the name by one. So you can say A zero A one A two you can redo it again. If you did a mistake, you start again, you rename it, start from A0, and you click again the first wire, you click on the mouse on the wire, A2, A1, A2, and A3. So that automatically connects the bus, the 4-bit bus, and assigns a single bit to the wires that we have specified in the full adder. So now we do the same thing for B. We call the first wire B0, and we click on the first wire, 
B0 automatically increments to B1, B2, and B3. And we're going to do exactly the same thing for the sum for the output. And you see that we do the same thing again with the output. And we assign the outputs, we connect them to the output bus, the 4-bit bus. And that's your 4-bit adder using full adder as a component to create a 4-bit adder. Now we could create an actually larger component using this 4-bit adder if we want to create larger adders, for example. So this is the 4-bit adder using schematic entry using Xilinx IAC. So we can rename again the carry in, the carry outs to give it a more meaningful name. And obviously once you're finished, you will want to simulate it to make sure that it's working correctly, creating a VHDL test bench. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching. We can reshape now, re make it look a little nicer. You'll see that the connections are still, still correct. And we can save that and we can simulate that. So thanks very much for watching. And if you have any questions, please drop me a line. Thanks very much.